Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon to a few out there. It is the Earthmaster here on this Sunday, May 21st, 2023, about 10.55 a.m. here in California. The latest quake shows some movement on the globe down here around the Prince Edward Islands area. This region did see a large 6.8 earthquake, originally coming in as a 6.3, 6.4 this got upgraded uh, in a big way to a 6.8 early this morning, about 8 o'clock or so, just uh, so just a couple hours ago. We are seeing a little bit of aftershock activity uh, within this region. There's a couple different divergent boundaries and some fracture zones out here. This is taking place really close to the Eric Simpson fracture zone. And this area does see some uh, larger activity on occasion. Looking at the historical... Uh, data here since about 1900 or so you can see uh, well at least some some fives out there um, looking to see if I see any sixes or sevens but looks like this may be one of the uh, larger quakes to hit out here in quite some time again this is out in the southwest Indian Ridge area just to the west and around the Prince Edward Islands area Striking at about a defaulted 10 kilometer depth. No statement on this earthquake. Uh, this was just one of two large earthquakes last night. The second one is over here in our watch zone. Kind of watching this area as this migration of pressure um, from all the movement here around the Loyalty Islands and south of Vanuatu area makes its way up around this plate boundary. We did see a 6.1 there in the Solomon Islands as expected far as subsequent activity goes in this region um, well that looks like that's about it for now the 6.1 in this area uh, still seeing some deeper movement back building here along the Kermadec Trench with some minor adjustment down here in New Zealand I expect though uh, for this area to definitely show some uptick and movement soon uh, just the way the plate dynamics work here across the Pacific um, plate area so definitely have to watch that area of New Zealand but yeah that's a rather definitely a rather odd earthquake way down there kind of curious to see here I know we had a uh, I think this if I remember right let me do a quick search here of the earthquake catalog book I want to check out uh, 6.5 and above and I think it's been a couple years now since we've seen uh, if I remember right, a pretty large earthquake off the coast there of South Africa. This is way down there, though, in this area. Kind of curious to see what we got down here. Um, six point, yeah, that was it. Six point seven. It was well. I remember it being well south here of the South Africa area. Eight point oh back in nineteen forty two. So goodness. This area definitely can see some large earthquakes. That was 1942. Where the uh, earthquake struck today, it looks like we did see another movement quake there. It's somewhat large there, about 6.7. 1984. Bob Fisher Ridge, 6.7. That's that one in 2019. And then 1997 for the 6.8. So it definitely looks like this area... Uh, does see some large earthquakes there every uh, it seems like 30 40 years or so the bigger ones though that was uh 1942 not how not for sure how often that happens out there but they can get some large earthquakes that's for certain so continue to watch this area let's go back here to the latest information here but either way they're seeing a little bit of uh, aftershock sequences there following that 6.8 uh, from early this morning far as the loyalty islands area let's see what we got going on here getting that uh, deep earthquake activity back building up here on the north side of the tonga trench with a couple deeper earthquakes there 4.9 and a 4.4 uh, shallower earthquake activity occurring upstream bouncing back and forth between the time frame of these two deep quakes uh, up around the tonga region at 10 kilometers deep so still a lot, uh, a lot going on here. 
uh, 6.1 definitely up around the bin as we mentioned last night uh, to keep an eye for an eye out for um, a little bit quieter out through the Philippines today in the Java Trench uh, most of the movement here recently has been um, definitely centered around the Loyalty Islands area of Vanuatu uh, but I think we definitely need to watch down here along the Kermadec Trench it looks like we are starting to see a little bit of activity kick up here in the deeper levels down in the deeper levels of the Kermadec Trench uh, which would affect some areas down south here across New Zealand uh, let's check out the GeoNet servers and see what they have for local activity here. Uh, felt earthquakes, weak and above, 3.5 from yesterday. All magnitudes map here. Uh, looks like some smaller quakes. There's a deleted deleted event. South Island. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Goodness. 2.6, couple ones in there as well from yesterday. I'm not really seeing anything major. Uh, up against the uh, New Zealand area currently, but uh, continue to watch that. I believe that will uh, kick into adjustment stage soon. Yeah, not a whole lot going on currently. All right, um, let's go back here to the USGS map. Yeah, that's just crazy down here to see some of that activity. All right. <clears throat> West Coast movement got uh, a little bit of activity here across the desert region of Nevada and California border. This area did see a four pointer here yesterday. Looks like that earthquake swarm is kind of continuing with 66 earthquakes. Again, yesterday 4.3 coming in there to the well, east of the Big Pine area, east northeast, about 64 kilometers uh, for that 4.3. Since then, we've seen some threes and twos and quite a few. Microquakes in this area. It is off the northern section here of the Death Valley Fault Zone, uh, which is having a little bit of earthquake activity further down south as well. Well, that's actually, it says Beatty, Nevada, but that's obviously in the California side for the 1.0. Not a whole lot going on up north into Northern California. Pretty quiet. Southern California looks very typical no major swarms no major unusual movement just the activity up here inland away from the plate boundary nothing going on across Yellowstone well let's double check that Yellowstone overview map here looks like um, looks like a little bit of earthquake activity here this is gonna be the uh, let's see which one came first the 6.8 see here I want to double check 6.8 came first so that was about 8 o'clock this morning and then it also picked up the 6.1 just looking at these two little blips here on the seismograph stations those are the two large distant earthquakes localized earthquake activity is going to be very spiky like these right up here so there's a few of them looks like a small handful of smaller microquakes there at Yellowstone National Park uh, but for now, nothing major going on there. <clears throat> Let's see what else we have. The rest of the country. Oklahoma still seeing some movement. Uh, looks like around the Chickasha area. Northeast of there. Off 92. And I believe these have to do with the uh, uh, oil pumping operations out here in the vicinity of these quakes. There's one right here with some tanks on it. They're scattered out and about. Uh, they're not quite as numerous. Uh, there's a some type of big one out here. There's a normal size one. But yeah, there's definitely uh, quite a few oil pumping operations out there that are um, in active stage, it looks like. Eastern portion of the country, there's not a whole lot going on. Uh, currently, there's 2.8 from yesterday up against the uh, mountain range here, northeast of Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's see what else we have of any excitement overnight. Uh, Kuro Kamchaka Trench, a little bit of activity here around the Japan region, uh, but further north looks fairly quiet for now. Uh, Turkey area getting in on some movement, some aftershock activity, and of course th uh, through the Mediterranean. 
South America fairly quiet. Just wondering what all this larger activity is going to lead to down south here. Um, it's hard to say because uh, we don't really know exactly all the activity going on here around the Antarctica area, uh, maybe potentially around the plate boundary, but uh, I'm not for sure if there's a whole bunch of seismograph stations down there monitoring all the activity, but that's kind of where I'm thinking some activity could kick up, kick up uh, following this activity today down south here. But uh, we'll just kind of watch that. Either way, stay on guard. Uh, solar weather activity is continuing to ramp up here. We've seen another, well, another moderate M flare overnight here. Looks like an M oh, 2.6 or so. It is uh, not as active as what we've seen yesterday, but still. Uh, looks fairly complex here with the structure of 3311. Got a couple different sunspot neighbors there. Let's see what we got for the latest imagery of the magnetic structure in this sunspot region. Still looks uh, still looks relatively unstable in this core. Uh, this regional sunspot here on the northwestern limb of the sun is well disappearing off the visible disk. These two down here don't look uh, all that probable of seeing any uh, major flaring. Uh, I still think we have probability of seeing maybe another, um, at least a couple of large M flares, maybe an X flare within this area. There is an elevated threat for the X flare probability at 35% chance of kind of getting up there uh, due to the, uh, well, the, the class that it holds which uh, is a beta gamma delta magnetic class 3311 and again those harbor some good chances of uh, seeing some x flare potential but overall threat 35 percent chance for an x flare m flare at 75 c flare around 99 percent chance obviously we're well within that category of the c flaring uh, a little bit of coronal hole activity facing us looking at the most recent image here does show a south tilting uh, according to the Earth-Sun plane here, uh, this hole, coronal hole, is kind of facing towards the south. But we could get a little bit of effects here on Earth in the coming days. Once that arrives, it looks like there's a little bit of enhancement here to the three-day around the 23rd time frame, 18 to 24 uh, UTC time. So we'll continue to watch that. Um, let's go back here to SolarHam, double-check. Yeah, besides, uh, aside from that, uh, just continue to watch that, see if that's going to produce any major uh, flaring. Storm Prediction Center today, well, most of the severe weather threat uh, looks to be up into Oregon and uh, portions of Washington up here. Mainly for some large hail, 15% chance of seeing some large hail around uh, well, these cities here, Baker City, Oregon. It's a little odd, but they do get they do get uh, some summertime thunderstorms up here. Just a rather odd year, uh, as far as weather-wise goes. Uh, let's see tomorrow, getting uh, some much-needed rainfall back into the southern plains, western Oklahoma, western Tennessee, or uh, western Texas, excuse me. But uh, no major severe weather setups today. Uh, if you are outside, this is your thunderstorm threat today. It looks like. Almost a guarantee down here in the portions of northern New Mexico and Colorado with a 70% chance of uh, thunderstorms there. In the blue as well, um, a little bit less for the 10% uh, in the brown area, but still covering a, a wide area of the western portion of the country. And of course down into Florida, getting in on some activity as well. Of course we are switching over to the El Nino pattern uh, let's see. Let's see if we can find El Nino. Current El Nino patterns here. This might do it. There's a whole bunch of info on the El Nino. What is it and what causes it? The effects, the impacts. Uh, I was trying to find the average right now. Is this the latest one? Yes, it is. Okay. 
So April 2023 compared to years past, and we don't know hundreds of years past, right? Things could have been drastically different uh, in terms of this type of setup. Uh, but it does look like the difference in average temperature is warming up here, uh, shifting over back into the um, El Nino pattern. Still fairly cool off the coast here of California, but all this plays a part in the weather that we see uh, not only in the states, but areas um, across the Pacific. But right here, it looks like, uh, it looks like a greater than 90% chance of El Nino persisting into the Northern Hemisphere winter. So for us here in California, it normally means wetter with a more subtropical jet here kicking in some moisture into Southern California, Northern California as well. But we just got off of a triple La Nina event. And this was by far one of the wettest winters on record. And it should have been, should have been much drier according to their, you know, their typical averages and statuses and, and what it all means. So not every single El Nino is gonna be the same. Not every single La Nina is gonna be the same as we know. Um, but these guys just base their information off of averages and what has happened in the past. So, But uh, we'll get into that a little bit later on as we head more into the El Nino winter months ahead. I'm already ready for winter. I'm not even choking. A little, well, it's not too bad right now. 75 out, in, uh, out around Chico, California here. But uh, supposed to be up in the mid 90s and cooling back down into the mid 80s. Luckily, uh, next week. So I'm I'm definitely wanting the cooler weather. I appreciate it a lot more than the heat. All right, folks, have a good one. We will catch you guys back here a little bit later um, this evening, unless something major happens. It looks like they did finally reset the uh, buoys out here uh, that were triggered from that uh, seven pointer a couple days ago down into well a couple seven pointers down into the uh, uh this trench right here outside the loyalty islands region south of port villa all right guys have a good one we'll catch you back here a little bit later on tonight take care